We spend most of our online lives in our browsers. Browsers, when done right, aren't something we think about because they should be boring and just work. And there hasn't been much change to browsers over the past decade or so. But lately, it seems like everyone is talking about a new player in town. And I'm talking about Arc from the browser company. As they say here on their homepage, Arc is the Chrome replacement we've been waiting for. Now, I've never used Arc before, but I'm going to download it and let's see what the hype is all about. I'll see you in Arc once this is installed. Hmm, cool intro. A browser for you. Create an account. Um, it looks like I have to create an account, so there's no bypassing that. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, and then it's asking me to do a migration from other browsers, and I'm assuming I don't even have Chrome on here, but if I did, I assume that would be an option. I only have Brave and Safari. So let's try it. Let's see what the, how this works. All right, so it's asking me what I use most. I'm going to say X and YouTube. And that's really it out of this list. So I'll hit next. Treat your bookmarks to an upgrade. And there's all my bookmarks that came from my other browser. So I'll bring them all in. Add some flair with a theme. So I can change the color and it looks very nice. I can make it more subdued and dark, or I can make it brighter. Um, let's do let's do like a purple. And I can do I can also drag it around this spectrum here. Let's do that. Hit next. Move faster with AI and Arc. Turn on Arc Max to power up your browser and save time online. Uh, yeah, we're learning. Let's do it. Let's see what it's all about. Go steady with Arc. Make it your default browser. No, I'm still exploring. Next. Welcome to Arc. Here's your Arc card. Um, okay, I don't know what to do with that, but... That's a thing. I guess they want me to share that on social media or something. And let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, I can see that the tabs are on the left. Instead of being across the top like every single other browser, um, my search bar is there. And then when I click on it, there's a contact the team, Arc Browser YouTube, or the browser company YouTube. And then I selected YouTube and X as my the two services I use, so there's buttons right there where I can go directly to those. And these are, look like bookmarks. And I can toggle this closed right there. And then we're in a tutorial, so pin tabs for later. It looks like you're moving tabs around. You can kind of put them in folders. So you can kind of have like a split screen with tabs. That's interesting, multitask with split view. And then it's telling you how to open your first tab, which is Command T. So let's try that right now, Command T. And it opens up sort of like a spotlight search. This is very interesting. Um, and these are articles that I've saved in previous browsers. So those are all in here now. And let's, let's, it's telling me to, to switch to a tab, I just hit Enter. So that's interesting. Okay, and it's a little bit weird. I'm not used to not having my tabs at the top. Okay, if I hover my mouse on the left side, this pops out. There we go. Um, view library. Show media in your library. So you can quickly grab screenshots, images, and videos by showing them in the Arc library. So there's things from my computer's download folder that are now inside of the browser. They're showing up in my browser here and it's a little hard to read this on the side and that's probably my fault for when I set the the purple background it does like a purple icon with a purple background so it's super hard to see that but I'm sure that can be tweaked and I'm going to exit the library and so if I hover my mouse all the way on the left side that's when this pops out and let's see if I go to X it takes me straight there and I'm signed out. It didn't didn't retain my sign in, so that's fine. That's to be expected. And here's all my bookmarks. Those all came in perfectly. 
I can do a boost. I'm not sure what this is. Edit the internet with boosts. Make a boost. Ah, okay. I can change how a site looks. So look at this. I'm adding like a tint, a color to X, which is normally just black and white. And it's changing the tint of the whole thing, including the colors. And choose an element to zap them. I'm not sure what that is. I don't see anything happening. And I could add my own CSS or JavaScript here. So that's good for developers. And reset all edits, delete this boost. Delete. New easel. This looks kind of like Apple's freeform where you can just like add shapes, draw things. So that's cool. That could be useful if you're doing like a screen share, you're on Zoom and you need to do like the whiteboard effect. You could do that here. Exit out of this. Now you can even draw. All right, and then by pressing this little plus button in the bottom, it gives me that split screen. So I could have the easel over here and then I could open, for example, X on this side. And you can see the super pared down when it's in split screen, there's just a back and forward button, the refresh button, then the website x.com, a little settings button with extensions. So you could add different extensions and this is Chromium based. So you'll be going off of the Chrome extension, the Chrome web store for the extension. So anything you have on Chrome, you'll be able to find and add to this browser. Back over to our tabs area. Let's add a folder. And so I guess the idea with the folders is you could say like, uh, you could call one work and then you could put all your work stuff in there. So you could do like work and then you could have another folder that's like YouTube. And then you put your YouTube videos that you are like a playlist type of thing in here. So now it's prompting me if I want to add Max, power up your browsing with AI, let Arc do more for you so you can do less. Ask on page. Okay, so this is cool. So you can press Command F on any page to ask a question, and it's going to pull up a chat bot where you can ask questions about the article or whatever page it is that you're on, and then it'll answer it using AI. There's these five second previews. So if you hover and press Shift over any link, it'll generate a preview of the web page without a single click. Tidy tab titles, we already saw that with the folders. Um, you can pin things in there. Ask ChatGPT, start typing ChatGPT in the command bar, hit tab and answers, get answers to your question in fewer clicks. And tidy downloads. So let's turn this all on, let's see what it does. So I just turned on all the max features. So I close out of that, go back to my tab. And let's do a DuckDuckGo search. Duck, duck. I'm making this video something called Camtasia. So I Googled Camtasia hotkeys. And if I go to the site, and by the way, things are loading decently well. There was a bit of a delay when I showed X earlier. It does seem to be a bit slower than Brave, which I'm used to, which I normally use. Um, but here I am on a page showing me all the different Camtasia shortcuts. And so what I want to try is that command F max search. So if I do the command F, I get this little thing in the top and this is, it's either find. So I could, I could type in speed, for example, and it found four instances of the word speed, which it highlighted, but I could delete that. And I could say, uh, what is the hotkey for changing playback speed? So I'm going to prompt it in plain English and let's see what it comes up with. I'm going to hit enter and it's thinking. And apparently this just uses ChatGPT. So just plain English. And here it is according to the web page, variable speed playback, play timeline backward at normal 1x, 2x, 4x or 8x speed. So pretty handy, especially on a page like this where there's a lot of information and I don't necessarily want to look through everything. And there might be different ways of wording things rather than saying, playback speed, 
They might say playback velocity or some other jargon related to that software, but the chat GPT will be able to sort of translate that and figure out what it is that I'm trying to learn from this page. Okay, so if I go back to my left side, um, I got that properties thing that I can toggle close if I want. I can hit the back button right there. Now I'm back to DuckDuckGo. And what happens if I hit this? Oh, there's my extensions. So I can, we saw that before, I can hit the plus button to add extensions there. I can activate extensions here. Um, I have a screen capture button right there. So that's kind of cool. Oh, right, look at that. If I, it's brightening the elements that I'm focusing on. So if I highlight just this search result, I can click on that and let's see how that looks. Hit edit. So it just captured that element of that particular search. And I could have, of course, picked a bigger element, um, but then I could put that into, I could save it, I could copy it, paste it somewhere, send via iMessage. So that's pretty cool. I can copy a link, copy current URL, and then I could send that easily. I'm curious what other Max features we have. So let's see where those are. Oh, and here's my tabs. So I can hit new tab right here and I could type something in. Uh, let's say Google and it's taking me to Google Maps. And that loaded very quickly. That was much snappier than some of my other searches so far. Um, oh, and look at that. If I go down here, there's my split screen one. So I had that easel and then I had x.com. So presumably I could add to any of these a split screen, add split screen, split view, and I could add something else. So now, look at that. now I got one thing there, one thing there. Let's see if I can do three split screens. Move to add tab, share split view convert to vertical split view. So that'll change it so that it's split across the horizontal axis. Um, but it looks like I can only have two. Oh, no, I can have three. Look at that. Three split screen view. And then I can change the position with this little button here. Move it up. I can move it down. Add top split. Now I'm going to have four split screens. And... I can change the size. Maybe I have so many that I can't, but I think that's normally how I would change the size. And let me just close some of these. I'm gonna close that one and that one. And then let's do a, let's, let's check out this max page again. I wanna see, so we did the command F, that was the search with AI. The previews, okay, let's go back to DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. And let's do Camtasia again. And so if I hold shift while hovering my mouse over it, I can see something's loading there. And there it is, a little preview. Um, that one tells a lot more. Here's a Wikipedia page. Hold on, I don't think I'm doing that right. Let me go back to ArcMax. Hover and press shift over any link to generate a preview of it. Hover on this link and press shift. Okay, there it is. So it has, it has a little picture and then it's got a little description of what's in that page. And then of course I could click on it to open that link. Then tidy tab, tab titles. So this is just shifting your tabs around. You can move things into folders and you can get organized like that. And it's got ChatGPT built into the command bar. Okay, so if I hit Command T and then type in ChatGPT and hit Tab, it takes me straight into a ChatGPT conversation. And so I can ask it, what do you know about Camtasia? And I'll hit Enter. Okay, and it just takes me to the site. I'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to do. But it does say it requires a ChatGPT account signed in on your current ARC profile. Okay. Um, so that's cool. ChatGPT is built into it. Tidy downloads. We saw that already. And they have a little thing here at the bottom upside down. It says, this is a hidden message. We think you're cool and have great taste. So always fun when they 
throwing little Easter eggs like that into the design. So let's dig into some of the more, some of this stuff down here. So we got our media, we saw that. This would be super handy for, you know, Canva or editing a web page where you have like all of your assets in a certain file and then you would have it right here in your browser without digging through your computer to find that stuff. And then you just drag and drop it into whatever application you're using it. That's the immediate use case I see there. And then your downloads, I'm assuming it would look, be like this type of layout. So it'd be a lot easier to find things. Uh, the easel we saw, there's that easel project that I made earlier where I was just doodling. So those would all get saved right there. Here's the spaces. So that's the same thing we saw before with our tabs at the bottom and then the folders, bookmarks, that type of thing. Boosts, click the paintbrush thing in URL bar to make your own or grab one from the boost gallery. So let's see what these are. Ah, okay. So I've kind of seen this on Twitter where this is like cute Gmail, it says. So what this does is this will actually change how Gmail looks when you're using Arc Browser. Or you can do like matte black for MKBHD. And then if you apply this, it'll actually change the CSS on the web pages that you're visiting so that it'll look different. So like here's one for Twitter, which will make themified Twitter. So it kind of makes it like purple with like purple buttons and um, yeah, super interesting. I'm not like a super into design and changing colors and things like that, but for somebody who is, this would be a cool option for you. If you're really bothered by the design of some website, you could customize it like this. So that was the boosts and you could just add templates here, I guess, add the, the boost files, which would then apply to those particular websites. And you can archive tabs here. That's it for today. That's my first look at the Arc browser. Overall, I like it. It's clean. It's got a lot of new stuff and I'm a sucker for new stuff. And I love that they're trying to do something different. Cause like I said, the browser industry has been pretty stagnant for over a decade now. So it's cool to see that they're building in AI and split screen tabs and different ways of organizing things. And I like it. I think it's cool. I'm going to keep playing with it and I'll report back. I'm sure I'm just scratching the surface of the different features that this software has. And so as I learn more, as I get deeper and integrate it into my workflow, I'll report back with more tutorials. Thanks for watching.